Hello, and welcome to the 11th episode of Did You Know, in which I look at strange and curious historical fascinations using the Northern Echo's marvellous archive. Now, how will you be celebrating the uh, coronation of King Charles III? With a street party? Uh, with a mooch to the pub? Even with a quiche? But did you know that in the last century in Darlington, they celebrated the coronation of a new monarch by publicly roasting a massive ox in the marketplace, which was then consumed by thousands of hungry Darlingtonians. Now, in 1902, a committee headed by farmer and butcher William Snaith, who you can see on the right here, selected this huge bull from Beedale's farm off Connorscliff Road. Uh, got to feel sorry for the poor thing. It really doesn't know what awful fate is about to befall it. It was slaughtered and taken to the marketplace, where, complete with its head and horns still in place, it was skewered on a 16-foot spit, which was connected to a steam-powered traction engine for rotation, and then it was hoisted above six huge braziers. There they are. Now, I should say that all of these brilliant pictures come from the Darlington Centre for Local Studies in Darlington Library. And in the background there, you can just make out the entrance to uh, Darlington Covered Market. Those are the steps uh, going up there. And in the foreground, just behind that first line of bricks, you can see the poor old ox uh, connected up by that metal pole to the steam traction engine for rotating. The traction engine wasn't actually very well behaved. It uh, caused all sorts of mayhem by threatening to break loose and run amok in the marketplace. And the weather also caused all sorts of trouble as well. Now, a hint if you are going to be celebrating uh, Charles's coronation is that each of the four coronations of the 20th century was uh, remarkably wet. Um, so it will rain whatever you are up to, I fear. But in 1902, after 15 hours, the meat was deemed well enough done for the fires to be removed. And then Mr. Snaith, the butcher and farmer, fell upon it and started the slicing at 6 p.m. He's the chap on the uh, right here, um, drawn by the acclaimed local art artist, George Algernon Fothergill. And this great picture was um, taken looking at the south side of Darlington Marketplace. Uh, those pubs behind were all demolished for the Dolphin Leisure Centre to go up. In fact, on the left there, you can see the original Dolphin pub from which the Leisure Centre takes its name. And then here we have the Sandwich Making Committee. What a fine group of men these really are. Um, they were in charge of making the sandwiches. And as you can see, they've got a bakery load of loaves on that groaning table there, uh, ready to make hundreds, if not thousands, of beef sandwiches. The mayor of Darlington proclaimed that the town had rediscovered a forgotten art. The meat tasted so good. I imagine him standing there with his hands over his very full belly as he said, our success is all the more unique in the fact that it was performed under the severest of criticisms and the most trying circumstances, not least the unpropitious weather, the rain. Now, not Everyone, though, was so impressed. Um, our architect, there he is, Mr. Fothergill, he drew that picture of the uh, 1902 beast being roasted. That's the bull's head in, you can see behind there. And the bull's head was on the north side of the marketplace next to uh, the pennyweight. Anyway, after drawing, drawing that drawing, uh, artist Fothergill wrote, the beast roasted dry was yellow and shiny in appearance to start with until he became brown and more or less shriveled up. And he presented a grim, weird aspect, which those who saw in their final stages will never forget 
to the end of their days. So it all sounds pretty gruesome. And a couple of days later, in the letters page of the Northern Echo, um, this rather jaunty poem appeared. It said, Now realise, Mr Editor, my opinion is this, that this frizzling and this frying we really ought to miss. This ox of sterling value will not hunger pangs avail when charred and marred and shriveled from its headpiece to tail. Despite these uh, criticisms, I don't know whether they were justified or not, uh, nine years later, um, for George V's coronation on June the 22nd, 1911, uh, Darlington organised an ox roasting committee to organise another ox roast for a king's coronation. Here is the 1911 committee, um, wonderfully arrayed there. Um, again, that pub in the background is the bull's head, so that's just to the left of the pennyweight. And um, for the 1911 event, the ox had been donated by the Snaith brothers who farmed at Coniscliffe, and their late father, William, was the one who chaired the 1902 roast committee. Uh, they had four large fire pans, which were lit in the marketplace at 5 p.m. on Coronation Eve. And the Northern Echo said a gaily decorated wooden superstructure had been erected to keep the worst of the weather off. And that's that timber building you can see um, on the right hand side at the top there. And the uh, the site of all of this uh, really impressed a poetic visitor who came from Gateshead. Uh, he wrote, the crowning of our gracious king on coronation day, the various towns all celebrate each in its different way. But mention really must be made of Darlington on Skern, so ardent are the Quaker folk, with loyalty they burn. The emblem of their loyalty stands in the marketplace, the carcass of a mighty ox made ready to cremate. There we are. I, I, I don't know why he finishes that with cremate. It doesn't really rhyme with the word place of marketplace, but never mind. You get the poetical gist of this impressive scene there in the marketplace. So at 7 p.m. behind the structure there, the ox already spitted, according to the Northern Echo, was lifted into position by half a score stalwart men. And at 8 p.m., before an immense multitude of spectators, the mayoress, Mrs. G.R. Young, ceremonially set the spit turning. Now, they employed uh, an electrical engine in 1911, rather than repeat the uncertainty caused by the steam traction engine in 1902. Now, here we are. This is a postcard, a souvenir postcard, showing the uh, ox roasting event of 1911. It's blank. It hasn't been written on, which is a bit disappointing, but this is one from my own collection. Um, it's not really working holding it up there. So um, there we go. There it is. What a fantastic, a fantastic image that is. There is the Dolphin Hotel, again in the background. The name was given to the Leisure Centre. And look at all those people hanging out of windows and standing in the crowd looking at the poor old ox being roasted behind those steel walls there. All of them with their, in their Sunday best with boaters on and all sorts of wonderful hats there. And I love the detail you can spot there. Just at the top there, um, there is... Is, uh, the slogans, um, a snappy one. Children are the backbone of the nation, it says. Dine forget, which is a great bit of uh, local dialect that uh, I've rather mangled there. And uh, it's, it's not snappy. That's not a Dominic Cummings uh, three-word slogan, get Brexit done. Children are the backbone of the nation. Dine forget. So, um, in 1911, the beast turned for 13 hours before it was deemed done, and the mayor and mayoress fell on it with ceremonial carvers and chopped it up. Uh, the Echo said um, there was great demand for steaks of the beef, and the huge carcass, which originally weighed about 50 stones, was quickly disposed of. Now, the uh, committee had um, ordered... 2,724 platters 
at five shillings and ninepence a dozen from a pottery in Stoke. Platters are plates. I've got one here. Very exciting. And um, I think there are quite a few of these dotted around in local houses. And uh, so this is obviously what you put your beef on there. Um, we've got a nice image there of the uh, ox being roasted. Colour pictures of the king and queen up there. Uh, Barra coat of arms in the middle there. Coronation of King George V and Queen Mary, uh, it says. And then all the names of all the dignitaries uh, who were involved in the ox roasting. You can pick these up for, I don't know, 10, 20 odd quid um, in, in junk shops and eBay and that sort of a thing there. And um, uh, you can see that uh, if I go back to uh, the picture of the wonderful setup of the uh, in the marketplace, um, that one. Uh, you can see on the right hand side there another very snappy slogan that says uh, create a lasting patriotic impression on the minds of the rising generation by subscribing to the children's treats to Redcar. Now by buying the plates and, uh, and the sandwiches people were funding a day trip for a thousand poor children in the town to go to Redcar on the train the day after the, uh, after the coronation ox roast. So it wasn't all about gluttony. Although that obviously helped a little bit. And the 1911 beef tasted very good, apparently. George Theakston, who was the secretary of the Ox Roasting Committee, uh, wrote his final entry in the Ox Roast Committee minute book, which said the general opinion was that the meat was exceedingly well cooked and that it would not be possible to roast an ox any better. So Darlington had perfected the art of ox roasting. But times were changing. In 1935, where it was suggested that George V's Silver Jubilee should be celebrated in a time-honoured ox roasting fashion. But the idea was dismissed as barbarous. So a couple of years later, 1937, when George VI was crowned, there was not a sniff of an ox roast anywhere in the region. Although you may remember that as recently as 2013, Darlington celebrated the 150th anniversary of the covered market by doing a nostalgia ox roast, where the ox was really hidden in the marketplace by all sorts of fencing, so you couldn't quite see that shriveled body as it cooked. Um, and I dashed down to get um, not just a sandwich, but a, a commemoration plate from 2013, um, which isn't really a patch on the uh, 1911 plate, but uh, it's still a bit of a thing, I think you'll agree, although I do rather like that fell a bit better. So um, in uh, 1937, there were no ox roasts locally in the uh, it, it, to commemorate the coronation. But in the Northern Echo's coverage of the 1937 coronation celebrations around the British Empire, it was noted that in Nairobi, in Kenya, two hippopotami from Lake Victoria were roasted over a coronation bonfire. Now, I have no idea what a roast hippo tastes like and whether it was as tasty as the sandwiches served up in Darlington Marketplace by these great guys in 1902, who undoubtedly cooked up a feast fit for a newly crowned king. So there you have it. Um, thanks so much for your time. Please subscribe to Did You Know? So you'll never miss another episode of these fascinating fascinations. And of course, go online to the Northern Echoes website, where every day at 9.30 a.m., one of my uh, marvellous uh, local history stories is added. And you can find all sorts of ways to subscribe bargain ways uh, to the website as well. Or you could just go out on a Saturday and buy a copy of the paper. Well, I've got 12 pages of this sort of wonderful stuff stuffed in there.
So uh, many thanks indeed for uh, watching Did You Know? And um, now you can say that, yes, you do know about the days gone by when they celebrated coronations by roasting oxes in Darlington Marketplace. So uh, goodbye for now. And uh, me and my plate, we're heading off to try and find another beef sandwich. Thanks for your time and goodbye.